The American Divergence, how Darwin's theory of evolution changed America's culture through the education system. The best arguments in the world won't change a person's mind. The only thing that can do that is a good story. Richard Powers. The American Divergence was triggered by the work of Charles Robert Darwin. Darwin was invited to travel on the HMS Beagle as the ship's naturalist in 1831. By 1835, the Beagle arrived at the Galapagos Islands. Darwin observed that the animals on each of the islands had certain characteristics that made them highly suitable for the environment they inhabited. For instance, the beaks of the island finches varied greatly despite their similar color and size. On one island, the finches had long, sharp beaks. On the next island, the finches had short, blunt beaks. On another island, small, thin beaks. Darwin saw these physiological differences and invented the term natural selection to explain how these adaptations came to be. Natural selection is thought of as the process whereby organisms better adapted to their environment tend to survive and produce more offspring. These finches became the catalyst of Darwin's theory of evolution by means of natural selection. When Darwin's controversial book on the origin of species by natural selection arrived in America, it inflamed the polarization between organized religions and enlightened intellectuals. This national debate became centered in the education system when high schools and colleges began teaching evolutionary biology. The dynamic pedagogy of evolution in the education system has impacted American culture and ideals while shaping the national outlook on science and religion. Public education on American soil has existed longer than America. The 17th century Puritans and the colonies formed public elementary schools that focused predominantly on reading so that their children could learn the Bible. Religious views continued to be taught in schools throughout the 18th century. School often started with Bible prayers and classes, including science, were presented through a religious lens. Biology was explained through religious perspectives, specifically creationism, the belief that the universe and living organisms originate from specific acts of divine creation as in the biblical account. However, not everyone in America shared these beliefs. Some Americans with a scientific worldview believed in a more evidence-based approach to justify human creation and sought out proof of these enlightened views through the theory of evolution. This caused a national divide between Americans. Tensions increased in the late 19th century when critical thinking about the historical accuracy of biblical perceptions led a number of religious followers to accept evolution as a tool of God. During this transition, theologically liberal Protestants and Christians began to branch off from their more conservative counterparts. This divergence put pressure on conservative Americans to defend their views on the origins of man and the inerrancy of the Bible. The evolution debate was officially ignited in the early 1920s after child labor and education laws were passed, quadrupling the number of children enrolled in high school from 1900 to 1920 with over 2 million high school attendees who were going to be taught evolutionary biology. This influx of young malleable minds made the evolution versus creationism impasse a national debate. It was during this time that ex-Secretary of State and three-time presidential candidate of the Democratic Party, William Jennings Bryan, a conservative Protestant became the figurehead of the anti-evolution movement. He proclaimed all the ills from which America suffers can be traced to the teaching of evolution. Copies of his speeches debating and debunking evolutionary claims were delivered to Tennessee legislator Representative John Butler, who introduced the Butler Bill to the Tennessee House of Representatives on January 21, 1925. The bill was intended to prohibit any theory that denies the story of the divine creation of man as taught in the Bible. On March 21st, the bill became the first law in America to ban the teaching of evolution, a step in the right direction, according to conservatives. The American Civil Liberties Union challenged the Butler Law, leading to the court case known as the Scopes Trial, which began in Dayton, Tennessee, on July 10, 1925. The Scopes Trial featured John Scopes, a 24-year-old substitute science teacher, who admitted that he willfully violated the Butler Law when he was teaching. The verdict of the Scopes Trial found John Scopes guilty and fined him $100. The Scopes trial was broadcasted live and caused a media circus. In total, 37 states considered anti-evolution legislation with over 53 bills drafted in the 1920s. The push by progressives to get evolution into classrooms quickly slowed, largely due to religious favoritism by government officials. The rise of white supremacy also impeded the teaching of evolutionary biology because on the origin of species suggested that all humans share one common ancestor alluding to the idea that one race cannot be superior over another. Furthermore, state governments set their own policies on church-state issues until 1947 when the same rules for federal legislation were applied to state-level legislation. 
This allowed individual states to decide if teaching a religious concept such as creationism violated the First Amendment separation of church and state. The government's stance on evolution changed a decade later in 1957 when the Soviets beat America to space, leading to a national science education surge. Evolution was swept into classrooms along with a flood of science-based materials in an attempt to win the space race and protect the free world. In order to save freedom, America needed science. JFK endorsed this change. It would certainly be the wholehearted understanding today of the importance of pure science. We realize now that progress in technology depends on progress in theory, that the most abstract investigations can lead to the most concrete results. Then, in 1967, a policy shift began when Tennessee repealed the Butler Act. The U.S. Supreme Court followed this appeal in 1968 with the court case Epperson v. Arkansas. The decision in this case rested upon the Establishment Clause, which can be found in the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution prohibiting the establishment of religion by Congress. Subsequently, in 1971, the Supreme Court case Lemon v. Kurtzman found Pennsylvania's Non-Public Elementary and Secondary Education Act unconstitutional. This led to the invention of the Lemon Test. The Lemon Test affirmed that a law must have a secular purpose, not advance or inhibit religion, and not excessively entangle the government with religion. The Lemon Test gave progressives the upper hand in court, causing diplomacy to fail in the legal system whenever evolutionary biology was taken to court against creationism. A different diplomatic approach was created by conservatives, calling for the teaching of alternatives to evolution for the sake of balance. The alternatives became biblical creationism, creation science, and intelligent design. These alternatives attempted to conceal their religious basis in the hopes that they would survive the scrutiny of the courts. Initially, this form of diplomacy was successful. In 1973, Tennessee became the first state to pass a law requiring equal emphasis on the Bible's Genesis story and other theories on the origins of man. But just two years after the Equal Time Law was passed, it was appealed by the Federal Appellate Court on the grounds of being unconstitutional. The Arkansas's Balanced Treatment Act and Louisiana's Balanced Treatment Act were also found unconstitutional in the 1980s. In response to the court's ruling, more evolutionary biology was taught unhindered in public classrooms in the late 80s to early 90s. In 1993, Bill Nye the Science Guy, a popular kids show demonstrating and explaining different aspects of science, aired on PBS. The first cloned animals grown from cells on petri dishes came to life in 1996 due to the theory of evolution expanding the understanding of genetics. By the turn of the century, the theory of evolution was accepted by the majority of Americans. A Gallup study found the percentage of Americans who reported belonging to a church, synagogue, or mosque an all-time low in 2018, averaging 50%, with a high number of that 50% believing in evolution as a tool of God. Now, in 2022, Darwin's theory of evolution serves as an axiom upon which branches of science have developed. Despite continued opposition from religious conservatives, Darwin's theory has influenced the creation of powerful genetic tools such as CRISPR, a genome editing tool, along with more everyday life applications such as video games with codes that adapt with every move the player makes, and the GMO produce at the grocery store. On the Origin of Species not only sparked the battle between science and religion, it set it on fire. A blazing debate and diplomatic venture that has stretched across 160 years of America's timeline, that has filled newspapers, petri dishes, hearts, minds, and textbooks. It details one of the most serious internal shifts in American ideals. The evolutionary biology debate resulted in a conversion to science through education, a metamorphosis of society steering away from traditional views. This debate wages on to this day with a third of the population denying the theory of evolution, a theory proven to the same extent as gravity. The tactics and schemes employed by organized religions and enlightened intellectuals in this debate evolved themselves, changing and adapting to survive to tell the better origin story, to overcome the hostile environment of America, to enter the education system, and to change the world.